Shouldn't be too hard at all. Sure. Snap, maestro. Only, uh, where do we start? Right here. Hi, everyone. Welcome again. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about two things. Um, safety with a hot chassis and how to test a hot chassis to see if um, the chassis itself is electrified or not. Uh, most important safety tip. Uh, the other is just some very basic um, information on our uh, mains power supply. Now, um, I'm going to provide a link down below to a video by Uncle Doug who explains uh, this whole setup in a lot more detail and explains that a lot better than I possibly could. Um, and it's all to do with um, isolation transformers and he delves a little bit into um, the use of oscilloscope in the use of live circuits. So it's an excellent video. I urge you all to watch it if you're just learning about the stuff like me. So anyway, um, our houses, uh, we have a power supply and we get it from a street transformer. Now we get it very active and our common or um, new, or hot and, and common or hot and neutral, depending on where, what country you are, you have a slight different terminology, but it's all the same thing. And um, I've put active, common and earth. I'm not sure if there's an earth coming out of the transformer into our house, but um, into the houses, but look, it's whether it's there or not, it doesn't really matter because we know that the whole circuitry is earthed anyway. So it comes in our fuse box and ends up at a power point in our home. So in Australia, um, we have polarised um, sockets and plugs, so we can't get it wrong. Um, they do in the States too now. Um, but they in, in the old days, they didn't. They didn't. Um, you could just plug it in either way. It didn't really matter. It was just a two-prong plug. So here, the um, top left angled um, socket and that's always active and top right that's always a neutral or common and of course straight up and down one that's earth now an important point to remember now is that here you can see that I've joined up common to earth and this happens either at the fuse box or definitely on the transformer in your street and there's a reason for that and it's just a an extra safety precaution that they've uh, put in place should any equipment that you're powering up develop a, a dead short or some other terrible flaw and we actually end up with current flowing into the earth back along the earth wire what will happen is the current has two paths to go it can go straight down to earth which dissipates it or it can go also through your common wire back through your fuse box back up into there into the transformer, which also, in the common there, is also connected or becomes a centre tap, which is connected to earth. So it's just, a, again, as I said, a safety precaution. Again, Uncle Doug explains it a lot better than I do. But that little thing there, it's important to know that common and earth have a connection. And now what's this mean for our hot chassis radio? Well. Let me just pull it up. Get it up on the bench. Get rid of that. And here it is. Let me just pull this back a bit. There you go. So this is um, one of the chassis that I, I, I bought for parts. And I, I bought it really because the speaker's intact. Um, and so it's very, very nifty. Uh, basket weave aerial which I think these are just great these things I love them but as far as um, other parts in there well there aren't really many you can take um, I mean a volume knob there um, and um, but the great thing about this and I didn't notice this until I pulled it out all the valves are in there well, this thing's complete and there's a good chance it's going to work so Here's the point. How do we know? Uh, let me just pull the, the power cord for it. Here it is. So 
these are the old power cords that we, we had. And as you can see, there's no polarity. You can go in that way, you can turn around and go that way. So you get a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So one of these terminals goes straight into the circuitry and that's where your active power should be going. And the other one is your output, which will be coming through the chassis, back out and back into the transformer and your street. So if you get this right, that's how it's going to work. If that was correct. However, you don't, you don't know. You get it around the wrong way and um, 240 volts is running first through the chassis and then <laughs> and then back through the circuitry and back to the transformer. So in that case, if that was incorrect and I would have 240 volts directly on the chassis and you touch it and you're gonna you're gonna get zapped. You're gonna get zapped, I'm sure. So how can we tell whether that's right? Well, that's right. Now, I know you can see one's got a green dot, one's got a red dot. This came from another hot chassis that I did repair, um, and subsequently it just died and I scrapped it, but I kept the plug. And um, and I put dots on there. Green is clean, red is dead. So let's see what we do. And I'm just going to plug it in. No power yet. And... I'm going to apply power to it, and the next thing I need is a light globe. And this is just plugged into my, um, where's this plugged into? No, this is not plugged into anything. We're going to power it up. So, pardon the mouse. So, there it is. And I'm just going to rest the plug there, leave that sitting there, and this is where that centre tap to ground comes into play. So I have this power cord here, and this is plugged into uh, another power board, and I've uh, oscillated the active and neutral, and attached uh, a little jumper lead to the earth and I'm going to now just attach that earth to uh, well in this case that would be the uh, active prong of the light and it doesn't really make any difference which way the current's going to flow through the um, through the globe and I'm going to grab another jump up. This time a red one. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, muscles are going on me. And I'll just attach that to the uh, other side of the other side of the plug. So now I'm going to apply power to the radio. And since I haven't done this before. Hmm, we'll give it won't give it a lot of voltage. Now the radio is plugged into my current limiter, which is plugged into the variac. So I've got multimeter plugged into the variac as well, so I can see what voltage is going up. And we'll give it 22 volts. So far, so good. We'll go up to 70 volts. Right now, if I've plugged in the wrong way then I've got live power running through the chassis. How do we test it? Easy. Uh, keeping myself safe. I'm not going to touch that flimsy little uh, jump lead there. So now if I if I'm correct and that's got power going through it the globe should light up. Yes As you can see, 240 volts. I'm making a circuit, and there's 240 volts on the chassis. It's running through lamp, back through the cord, and off to um, to ground, 
which which is also connected to uh, the common. So that's not the way to do it. And that's the wrong way around. Now, if we unplug that, turn it around, and this time the green dot's facing me. Get in there. Power's back on, 70 volts. And where's my gizmo? And that's correct, there's no power. The chassis is now not live. Would I touch it? Nope, wouldn't touch a chassis. Absolutely not. But that's how to do it. Now, I must admit, I was quite pleased to sponge. I thought of this myself, but, you know, sorry guys, somebody else had thought of it before me. Um, and I'll, you know, um, I'm going to post that link to a fellow in America. And um, he also talks a little bit about um, um, oscillation transformers. But I wanted to get this out there. Now, I think it was fate that I had to, because I, when I saw this last night, I thought, yep, I want to... I want to demonstrate this for safety reasons. Um, and then this morning on YouTube, um, a fellow called Fred sent me a message, and it's regards to the, my video on um, doing the MP3 mod. And he pointed out that there's um, a potential for, well, extreme danger if you do it, if you do an MP3 mod on a hot chassis. And I guess I, I have to agree with him, and I've never done one. On a hot chassis, I've always done it with transformers. Chassis with transformers, because they're safe. Well, safer, safer than these anyway. And um, I could see I could see the problem that um, if you get it round the wrong way and the chassis is live and your on-off switch, which is metal, is also earthed to the chassis, well, zap, yep. So, um, MP3 mod on hot chassis. Personally, I won't do it. Um, if you want to, certainly it's, it's entirely up to you whether you do. Um, and there are precautions you could take, I guess. Um, but um, it's not something that um, I particularly would recommend. But um, <clears throat> that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. Um, I think it's an important safety tip uh, if you ever deal with the with the hot chassis. But please, please check out Uncle Doug's video. Okay, um, he's just great at explaining all these concepts, and he does it in a very simple and logical way. So anyway, thanks for, for watching, everyone. Really short one, but important. And please, please stay safe. See you later.